Hi, this is Cindy from Vintage to New, and today I'm going to show you five beginner embroidery stitches that will get you a long way in starting to embroidery. I have some upcoming projects that we're going to be doing just a little bit of embroidery with, and in case you didn't know how to do these stitches, here's the video for you. So, without delay, let's get started right away and learn the basics of embroidery. So let's get started right away learning how to embroidery. So there's really just a very few supplies that you need to have. Um, I, when I go to Goodwill and they have white sheets that especially are old ones that are 100% cotton, get those. Uh, they make great fabric for practice or um, for projects. So that's what this is. This is an embroidery hoop. You can get those at Goodwill sometimes too, um, but they're not very expensive. So for today, we're going to use a hoop. You need to have a needle that the eye, the top part up here where you put the thread in is called the eye. It needs to be large enough to hold up to six strands of embroidery floss. That's what this is called is embroidery floss. And you just need two or three different colors to get started with. This is something that's just an added extra. You don't have to do this, but this is something that we used to do back in the day. Um, when I was a teenager, we used to embroidery all the time. We used to um, embroidery what we called work shirts. Now they're called chambray shirts. And if you put a wrapping of um, fabric or twill tape or something like that around the outside gives it more grip. Now you could use hot glue. I'm just using some fabric glue and you just twirl this around like this and you want to keep the outside edge nice and neat. You don't want to have big wrinkles or um, problems because you want it to be a nice even surface. So you just wrap it around like this till you get to the end. All right, so I'm at the end. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue right here. And like I said, you could use hot glue. I think one more little loop to make it even here on the outside and this glue will come through and trim that off. So now my hoop is wrapped and like I said this is completely optional. You don't have to do this but it's really nice. So you take the inside loop and you put it down on your table. You put your fabric over the top, open up your hoop by unscrewing this at the top and then just sliding it over your fabric. See, because of that fabric, I need to loosen it more. Slide it down over like this and oh, what a nice little tight thing we have. Tighten it just a little bit and then take and really pull your fabric on the sides, all top and bottom because you want to keep it nice and evenly tight all the way around inside. So that's all you got to do and then tighten this down nice and tight. You can hear it. It's like a little drum. Take out your embroidery floss and get about, I would say no more than 15 inches to start with because it can get, so it gets knotted on you. So the way you do this is you take your thumbs and you decide how many pieces of this floss that you want to use when you do your embroidery. And for today, I'm just going to use three. So you'd get three in your left hand, three in your right hand, and then you just pull like that and it pulls apart. So now I have three strands of embroidery floss and I'm running my thumb down like this to get any of the twists out that happened when we were separating it. Thread the eye of your needle and then put a knot in the bottom. Now there's lots of ways to make a knot. I'm going to show you the way that I have always done it. Lick your, 
I know it sounds gross. Lick your finger, your, your index finger. Do one twist around like that and then just roll it up and then take your index, your um, middle finger, put it down and then pull it tight in between your fingers so there's a knot. So that is one way to do it. So the first stitch we're going to learn is a running stitch. So you start at the bottom, poke your needle up from the back, and you use your middle finger in the back to help guide you. So you go down and then you push your needle back up using that finger so that you can make your next stitch. And you just follow down the line and the goal of a running stitch is to keep your stitches all the same length. And that takes a little bit of practice. So down, pushing with my finger underneath and pushing it back up. And you can see there's a little gap between your stitches. So try to keep your stitches and your gaps the same and try to keep them going straight on your line. So this is good for um, outlining something or uh, just a decorative little stitch. So that's the running stitch. You can see. All right, so we're gonna go back here we're going to tie it off. The way I tie off is I go under the stitch, pull it. I always do a double knot. And um, as you get fancier in your embroidery, I'll show you a fancier way to do this. But for now, we're just going to do that. The next one we're going to do is called a back stitch. And a back stitch is a, just like your running stitch. You come from the back and come up and go down like that. But instead of pushing up with your finger, you just keep your needle down and come up your line. You come up your line and go back up. And the reason it's called a back stitch is because you go back and go down the hole that you just came up right there. So let's do that again. So I'm gonna come down the line then I'm going to go back to my previous stitch and go down that same hole right there. So up on the line and back down that same little hole. This one makes great stems. I would say I use this one most of the time for stems. This is great for outlining. A very versatile stitch and as you need more thread just pull your needle up a little farther and back down so there is your back stitch okay I'm working my way up and so this is the last one in my back stitch like that we'll do the same we'll go back here We'll go through this last stitch, make a knot, double knot it, clip it off. So there's that. It looks like a little chain when you do it. So you come up on your line like that. Okay. Now this takes your other fingers. You're going to Take your thread and go over here, hold it with your thumb, and you're going to come back with your needle and go back in the same hole that you just came out of. So I'm in the same hole I just came out of. I'm going to come up on the line just a little bit, so about a stitch length, and I'm going to pull my thread. And it, see that little loop? Just pull it so that the loop closes a little bit, like that. Here's the tricky part. Don't do anything else. Pull this thread over, hold it with your thumb, take your needle, go back down inside the loop, coming back through the hole that you just came up. So it's inside that little loop. Come up another stitch and come out the top. See how this is here? It's going to make another loop. Just like that. So then I do the same thing. I come over here, I push my thread back over, 
I put it right back down in the same hole I just came out of, go up another stitch right on the line. Okay, and you just keep going, making a little chain. Now this one is great if you want to outline something with a little bit heavier line. You pull the little loops a little tighter. But so that's that's your chain stitch. So you you um, knot that off the same way we did all the others. Okay, so this one's called the Lazy Daisy Stitch. You come up in the center, put the thread, your embroidery floss to the side, hold it with your thumb, go down next to that where you just came up, go out where you want the end of your little uh, daisy petal to be, push it through, and pull it so that you have a nice little loop. And don't pull it too tight because you want to have that petal shape. Now, on our chain stitch, we went back down on the inside of the daisy petal. This time, we go down on the outside of the petal. And so basically, we have a stitch that goes over the top of the loop and it holds it in place. So let's do that again. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna hold it with our thumb, we're going to go back down in the same area as our stitch where we came up. We're going to come out right where we want the end of our petal to be. We're going to pull it so that we still have a nice little loop right there. Then we're going to go on the outside of that loop and go back down and hold it in place. So there's that. And one tip, if you're making daisy flowers, um, you always want to do five petals. Odd numbers always look better than even numbers. Sometimes we just really want to do four, because that just feels right, but you want five petals to do a lazy daisy flower. So I'm just gonna finish this one up. Do it again, back down, out on the spot. Down there. And our last one right here. Hold it with my thumb. Okay, you can see I pulled it too tight and I lost the daisy shape in my flower. So I want to fix that. Just going to pull it a little bit. Much better. So there's that and now I'm going to end this thread. Same way as before. So the last little stitch that I'm going to show you today French knot. So to do a French knot, you come up from underneath. You do the same thing. You, you hold the thread between these two fingers and you wrap it around three times. Two, three. Then you go down very close to the same hole. Doesn't have to be the exact same hole. But here is the tricky part and the part that's really important. You gently pull that so that this is snug against your needle. All these wraps are nice and snug against your needle. And pull it down in and you get a really nice little knot. If you don't do that snugging, it will end up being a loop or a knot or something like that. One, two, three, down close to the same hole. Hold your needle at the end with this fingers, tighten it up so that it's a little bit snug. You don't want it super tight, but snug and down. Let's do a couple more. Now, when you're doing French knots, if you notice, when we're twirling this thread here, your thread here gets some um, twists in it. And eventually, if you've done enough French knots, when you go to do this, your thread will knot because it's got so many twists in it. 
So after you've done a few French knots, hold your embroidery hoop out like this and drop, drop your needle. You can't see it, but the needle is just spinning around down here and then like run your finger down and get those twists out. Then you're ready to go back and do some more French knots. So if you do that and snug up your threads, your French knots should turn out very successful. So knot that off and there's one more place I want to show you using French knots. I bet you can guess. We're going to come up right in the middle of our lazy daisy here and we're going to go one, two, three and go down in and then we're going to come up over here, go down in and then one more. So what did I say about odd numbers? So we wanted five petals and it's nice to have three French knots in the center of your daisy. So three wraps down and out. So just that quick and easy we have learned, so just that quick we have learned the running stitch, the chain stitch, French knots, back stitch and lazy daisy and now you can make outlines you can do a little flower this is a great if you can get these down this is a great beginning to embroidery